Hello, boys and girls, my name is Otzti, and welcome to another day in Minecraft. Behind me, you can see Ilmangus 200k subscriber special 2x2 jungle tree farm. The link to his video with world download you can find in the description. As you can see, this is massive, so we'll probably split the construction up into multiple episodes and maybe manage one each week. Should be uh, really great. On the right side there is a massive flying piston wall for moving the locks and breaking the leaves. On the left is a TNT blast tower to break down the wood. These two parts we will take as they are. However, the middle section will be tweaked a bit. The uh, growing plots uh, must be further apart so that they do not interfere with each other. Then there are also some other changes and improvements in order to be grow, uh, to grow all 2x2 two two tree types. So uh, let's get to it. I thought of placing this farm along this side uh, here at the back of uh, these tallish towers, but Due to the dimension, the end would be on the other side of that uh, tower or mountain there. And as it turns out, 2x2 two two trees are a bit peculiar about uh, the terrain uh, on which they grow. For example, uh, they have a problem if uh, they have some neighboring blocks on uh, on certain sides here so basically the farm is uh, orientation dependent and that's why i decided we will place it along this side and move it quite a bit out there uh, so it will uh, go over this river and we will have to think of something nice uh, uh, to fix uh, the uh, issue there. And it will also go quite a bit back there. Uh, and we will probably shave a good part of this, this mountain off here. Uh, but that gives us uh, a, a small uh, space here. And then a larger one back there for uh, additional uh, farms and buildings if i can think of any so uh, let's get this prepped this collection area can give you an impression of how large this farm is but that's not all because there's a backside to it um, on here, so far, I have implemented the uh, item sorter. So, um, items go here in the middle through this channel. And then here we are looping around uh, with item sorters. And the first three will be saplings. And three different kind of saplings and this is already the uh, the first change as uh, opposed to uh, the original farm because we can have jungle saplings dark oak saplings and spruce saplings because this farm will work with all kind of these saplings and then here on the back we funnel the saplings into uh, these dispensers that will shoot out the saplings again and they will go all the way up there and right at that point that's where the player will be standing and for each time the trees are harvested we need 12 more saplings and that's exactly what they will get 
and uh, this is done by uh, this contraption here uh, with uh, the ease amount of delays down there there is a comparator powering a piston down there pushing this observer over creating a clock and just long enough for the dispenser to pop out 12 items and over here we have a mechanism to turn uh, this thing on the signal uh, to dispense uh, saplings comes from up here but as you can see if this block is not pushed down the line is broken and we have this set up in total three times one here one there one there and all three lines go over here to these three lines under the observers which are sitting under a huge cobble wall and uh, if we uh, at the top push block here this is detected the block gets pushed down and if we remove the block again block is removed down here as well so that's how we can decide from the top which kind of saplings uh, should be shoot up to us uh, and the uh, input signal for dispensing these saplings will always be the same so that's the first part of this farm let's do some more work next section is complete with these three arms here which are actually there to detect the uh, tree growth and the way this happens is by using two daylight sensors one is right beside the tree trunk so whenever a tree grows there will be either logs or leaves about it and then when we compare the signal from this one with the one from there uh, we get a powered output and we have all this three times because we have three uh, growth modules for the tree and then after each one we have an end gate combining the uh, input signals uh, this line here is from the two over there and in here we get this one and then we get a powered output line if all three signals uh, are actually powered and then on top here we have a glass floor uh, and eventually we will have uh, have water flowing all the way over here because uh, somewhere between the water down below and the uh, modules where the tree grows we need to have this contraption and of course uh, saplings and sticks and so on could land on on these arms and we would lose those as uh, they are not collected by the uh, water stream that's why i put this uh, level up here uh, so we can uh, collect as much of the drops as possible so there's still quite a way to go until we are finished with the first part of this farm which is basically all the the farming plots here in the middle and also the uh, the wiring here at the back so i will be back once i have the next set done 
from here you can guess where the farming plots uh, will be uh, they still need a bit of uh, more work but not too much and then over here we have what seems to be like a mess of redstone um, but it all makes some sense and it's not that complicated because it's mostly redstone lines and repeaters so for the most part nothing uh, too complicated but in the heart there is this contraption and if you have seen my recent video on uh, storing state with redstone in minecraft you might already have guessed what this is about this is basically a simple state machine or state storing uh, contraption where the redstone blocks are moved around on this piston tape and based on the uh, upper redstone block location uh, we are in a certain state the states are uh, machine is uh, turned on uh, then the saplings are planted uh, tree have grown and uh, flying machine is running and uh, together with these uh, states there are various input signals uh, we get from, for example, over there, uh, the turning on of the machine or from the uh, uh, pressure plate over there signaling that the saplings are all planted. And then, of course, we have daylight sensors down there that will tell us um, the uh, the tree have grown yeah that's what they do and the last signal is not directly coming from the farm but it's this line over here which is basically just a line with a bit of delay uh, wrapping around here to this end gate uh, uh, which is basically um, we have to move the uh, bottom layer of the tree trunk around before the flying machine can start to move the trunks. So let me uh, put in the last piece uh, for this episode, uh, the, uh, the growing area and everything here in the middle. And then we are done for today. The farming plots are finally in and there are two components to it. One is uh, the uh, dispenser right here for the bone mill so the tree can grow. And this is powered by the lower redstone line uh, extending the uh, piston, pushing up the uh, observer, making a fast redstone clock uh, powering everything and the uh, other part uh, consists of uh, this piston extender that uh, pushes this normal piston up which then can push the lowest stem block over by one block and then the wood will be uh, pushed up by these two pistons here and that is so that uh, if everything is uh, retracted again we don't have any wood uh, on these two blocks so we can have the flying machine from there pushing through this gap through this gap and over here so with this the first part is finished and the next one will be the flying machine which can be a bit um, complicated and uh, prone to fail meaning the flying uh, flying machine going off when it should not while building it up 
But we will see how that goes in the next episode. Until then, goodbye!